presence. Now let's do one together. What is vibing? This is Vish. And today, or I guess in this moment, I will be talking to you all about why you shouldn't do Western yoga part two. I know I mentioned I'd make it a while back and I'm finally here to make it in the now. So just to clarify this point, uh, this isn't to bash Western spirituality, Western yoga even. It's kind of a clickbaity type of title. So now that you're here, would hope and appreciate if you ride this adventure along and watch the video and uh, talk about the, let's call it the concerns that I have with Western yoga, for instance. And I do want to briefly talk about how, I'm not going to say too much, because if you want to hear more about the introduction and all those other things and the backgrounds, which are most of the first part of the video. So if you just look up why you should do Western yoga, I think there's like a part one. Uh, I think it's titled part one, uh, or it could just be titled why you should do Western yoga. So that's on the channel. So check that out. But to keep it brief, I uh, am very grateful for it because that is what opened the eyes for me at least. Uh, to even explore the original spirituality or the Eastern practices. And it's not even about what is right or wrong, what is moral, what is immoral, what is cultural appropriation. It's really just what works, what is going to benefit you, as simple as that. And you see all these phenomenons of, for example, cultural appropriation. I view it, I mean, yes, it can be viewed as like a disrespectful thing if you do it and just the view that I have currently with the level of consciousness that I have, and this is really just to, the reason I'm prefacing with all this is that maybe the views will change and become more quote unquote open or more clear with time. So I do wanna make that clear right now in this present moment. But I really don't view any culture uh, necessarily even owning a specific thing. I mean, owning is a form of identification. Identification is a form of attachment that is all egoic mind driven. Uh, society or culture is really just uh, there can be conscious cultures there can be unconscious cultures the point is when there's this whole group mentality and a group attachment towards a similar thing that is where the culture kind of forms usually at least from the unconscious means so if there isn't i guess to keep it simple if if one person is consciously using one thing from another culture to explain something and is able to do the conscious DD or like the due diligence and research and hopefully expressing the ideas as well as the the meanings of the original culture or practices that'd be great so i i just that's the way i view i don't really uh, view any culture owning anything now, if, for instance, one culture, one person was to disrespect, quote unquote, a culture by doing something unconscious, I'm not going to say that that's something that should be agreed or should be necessarily allowed, but we must accept it. You see, acceptance is a universal thing. Acceptance helps you transcend the duality that we have, both the light, the dark, the good, bad, positive, negative, so on. Acceptance is oneness, wholeness. It's transcendence of that duality that I've talked about before. So with that being said, uh, I've truly learned uh, that wisdom is something that comes from your inner core. It's something that when you tap into that beingness, you, as people say that when they're enlightened, and this is what I've heard, so I'm just conveying what I've heard from, uh, res from sources that are very uh, experienced, let's just say, that you become one with everything. So. It's very simple. I mean, you and I, there's literally no owning in that aspect. Now, this isn't to take away from certain things like copyrights and, uh, you know, things along those lines. I'm not going to discredit how in the material world it might be necessary to own even your house, property, and so on. But I just wanted to shed a different lens and light as to why I'm saying all this stuff. But with all that being said, let's get more uh, deeper uh, into the actual topic of why Western yoga is something you should be careful about or more conscious about. Let's start with this, right? Something like, I think it's called Bikram yoga. It's a very popular, popular thing that was started. It's become, I guess, in a way, abstracted from the original yoga practices. And yes, there are a lot of, and when I'm saying Bikram, that's an example. I'm talking about general Western yoga. There are you know, all these yoga studios that 
probably do incorporate. I've experienced this, you know, on, on, on experiences uh, that I've had. And a lot of these yoga studios do, in fact, talk about Sanskrit terms and practices and yogic practices and so on. But a lot of it is commercialized. It's become very misunderstood, misconstrued, if that's the appropriate term. And really the roots are not being tapped into and expressed. And the point I'm making is there's actually a lot of harm that can be caused than just good. Now, if there's something that, for instance, the point I'm making and the reason I brought up the whole prefacing of the cultural appropriation and so on, it's not even the disrespect that, you know, Western people are using yoga and they're like, oh, it's, you know, disrespecting Eastern or Indian yoga. No, I don't care, really. Uh, if you're using something to your benefit, like eating healthy food, no one owns healthy food. It's just eating healthy food. As Sadhguru says, I mean, yoga itself is like a technology. I mean, it means ultimately, ultimately union. But a lot of the practices are really just technologies that you can use for inner well-being, or as he calls it, inner engineering, which is a... A beautiful term, beautiful term. So, with that being said, uh, some things to be cautious about, right? So that includes the hot yoga studios, the corner of Guru. Again, I'm not going to. This is where I like to keep it to an I don't know type of thing because Sadhguru himself has mentioned this. And a quick pivot to uh, Yal to express why I'm saying this again is because when you say, I don't know, it opens up the tremendous possibilities to the truth. You see, when you make these beliefs or assumptions about things that you don't know, you're picking a side and you're becoming oblivious to the actual truth. You see, the truth is really just an answer that is experienced. That's it. And so I haven't personally experienced a lot of these things, but I've learned this from Sadhguru. And I would like to say like see like using like and dislike is also uh, something to be conscious about but i would prefer uh, let's just use the word prefer for now to say that it's okay to i'm not gonna even say trust but i would very much probably just using the understanding that i have and the level of consciousness that i have i would like i would prefer to learn from a yogi that is from the original uh, practices, right? Versus some commercialized business that is just making money off of this and knows a few postures and makes yoga all about physical movement. You see, yoga itself, like I said earlier, just means union. It's a very deep process that includes meditations, includes asanas, yoga asana is the physical aspect, postures. And I even learned this from Sadhguru as well as a few people. There's actually three postures in yogasana or yoga. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact term would be for, for what I'm talking about, but there's only three postures. And all those variations that you see, all those hundreds or maybe even thousands, are all about getting the body and the system ready to sit in that one position or one of those three, really. So this is a fascinating thing I learned. Uh, again, it's something I haven't, didn't know about through, excuse me, Western yoga. Uh, and so, anyways, one of the harmful effects could include, like I said earlier, the, well, not what the harmful effect is, but one of the harmful things that can arise are due to doing it in hot conditions, or like the hot yoga studios. Now, you might feel the sweat, which could give you, in a way, excuse me, a false sense of endorphins getting released and so on. I'm not saying they're not getting released, but it could just make it seem like there's more than that's actually happening. But the reality is, according to Sadhguru, he says that doing yoga in these hot studios could actually give you more harm. Now, why is that the case? I don't know. It's back to what I've said earlier, so I'm not going to go into detail. But again, I, I would definitely prefer to listen to the guidance from a, a guru, literally, you know, where this stuff is coming from. And so, again, he's not saying don't do yoga. It's just things you should be consci conscious about. That includes doing the hot environment. And he even mentioned a great point, which is he wouldn't be surprised if scientific studies are proving or showing that yoga is actually not great for your health. I mean, it seems like a lot of the studies are in favor of yoga being optimal for the health, but you just never know as these hot yoga students start picking up traction. There's a bunch of other things. I mean, even doing the simplest of difference in finger, like from here to here, right? Here to here can create a tremendous amount of difference in the effects, whether it's positive or negative. So really just the whole goal for this is again, not to stop doing this yoga uh, that you're learning from the West, but to be more conscious and hopefully also be aware of the Eastern and the original roots too. And that way you will 
just use this practice as a technology and really get the full benefits without any harm. So hopefully this all made sense. Appreciate you taking the time. And again, just to make this clear, I, I've learned, I mean, Western yoga itself was a gateway into spirituality for me, so I'm very grateful for it. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching again. Make it a right day. Take it joyfully. Presence. Now one together. Stay conscious, ecstasy.